The Iowa Hawkeyes snubbed by the NCAA Tournament Committee. I'm joined by baseball guru Jared Barger, who joined us during the weekend. Uh, we thought we'd have another post game to do together later in the day Sunday. The Hawkeyes fall to the Michigan Cheaters, I mean the Michigan Wolverines, 13-1 to in Game 2 of the Big Ten semifinals. I've got a lot to talk about. I know we did a post game show yesterday, but I wanted to get your take on a couple of items, especially now that we know Iowa is not in the NCAA tournament. First being what happened yesterday, and and perhaps you heard the rant. I know a lot of people heard my rant on Michigan and the foreign, foreign substance that got their pitcher kicked out of the game after five pitches. Um, clearly a sticky substance that, that affects positively affects a pitcher's throws. Um I want to get to that first because I had some people after the the game on the post game show making the claim that this happens all the time in the major leagues, and I did some research and I'm going to uh, paste this article. I'm going to put this article in the description of this video, Jared. But this is from uh, MLB writer Alden G- G- Gonzalez from back in March, talking about the uh, enforcement of the foreign substance rules and checking for foreign substances. And according to this article i'll read this verbatim the mlb began to enhance its punishments for these sticky substances finding these sticky substances back in 2021 but what this had said was that caleb smith then with the arizona diamondbacks and hector santiago at that point with the mariners each received a 10-day suspension for allegedly using illegal foreign substances in 2021 okay fine but they became the only players suspended under mlb's new protocols So that tells me, Jared, that this, contrary to what some may have you believe, that this doesn't happen all the time in the major leagues. And regardless, if you want to debate me on proper discipline, let's just get throw that out. You're a huge MLB junkie. You're a big Cardinals guy, I know. Um, This does not happen all the time. Am I correct? Not at all. Not at all. It it was happening a lot. Uh, The use of spider tack, uh, one of the most popular substances that was used by pitchers um several of them admitted to using it because it wasn't against the rules at that time and then the mlb went into the analytics of it and they looked at the uh, numbers the hitting numbers down across the board and let's be honest part of it is uh, money uh what what makes people uh enjoy baseball more more runs scored, especially for the younger generation. They don't appreciate the pitching duels uh, as much as some of us might. So, you know, they saw this as a problem that they, that averages were down across the board. And so then they, they felt that this uh, substance spider tack or whatever, whatever they were using was giving pitchers an unfair advantage. But after the point which the MLB went in and banned it, it does not happen all the time. It's only happened a handful of times. And so I know you were watching the game when uh, the Michigan pitcher got caught five pitches in. And here's the deal, Jared. Let me just say this. I'll just I'll say the same thing I said yesterday. This is my opinion. And that's the great thing about being a human being. We can all have opinions and we don't have to trash each other for having a different opinion. My opinion is that Michigan should have been disqualified. All right. Because here's the deal, especially when you're looking at a tournament setting. I understand that he only threw five pitches in the Iowa game. I get that. There's a couple things with that. Michigan was not disciplined as far as, I mean, I don't even know how you don't take away the count. I believe that he had thrown five pitches and those five pitches counted. How do you count five pitches that were thrown illegally? Explain that logic. First of all, Jared. Well, I'm afraid I can't. Um, yeah, you are wearing a Hawkeye hat. You're a little bit biased, but I think we can both admit that's absurd. Well, whether it was Michigan Iowa or Michigan Rutgers, I would have the same opinion, and I Absolutely. think you would say the same. So, and I'd say the same thing if it was Iowa. If Iowa had got caught doing that, I, I said that yesterday. I would be, uh, I would be so appalled, and I'm very disturbed by some of the Michigan fans who have come to their team's defense. I think that's very disturbing. Quite frankly, I think it's disturbing. But here's what I'll say as well. The reason I believe Michigan should be disqualified, and I gave this illustration over the phone to one of our callers yesterday in the postgame show, and I, I, I use the illustration of a company, and you have a, a, an employee that perhaps steals a bunch of money from a client or steals a bunch of money from another company. Well, of course, you're going to fire that employee, but 
as the company, you you employed that individual. So it's your responsibility. Now, certainly you can take that play, that employee to court, but ultimately it is it falls on you to make amends and to make sure that that other company gets paid back. I mean, so you have to take some responsibility for your for your company or if you're your player slash employee. We're talking about baseball here. You have to take as the team, as the organization, Michigan has to take it, uh, you know, take responsibility for what this player did. It's not a matter of, well, they get suspended. Sure, they got suspended, but I don't agree with that discipline. To me, Michigan is responsible. OK, and I can't say. I, I can't say for certain that they knew, the coaches knew. I know that none of them argued when he got tossed out of the game. None of the coaches argued. None of the players argued. Take that for what you will. Um, and certainly you have a different perspective on this being an MLB guy, but what do you think the appropriate punishment would have been for Michigan? Because the other argument could be made that, hey, he threw five pitches. Give Iowa five runs. I'm not saying that's fair, but I mean, theoretically, right? If he threw five pitches, technically you could argue that had he not been using the foreign substance that I was entitled to five runs. Well, I'll say this. I like your comparison with the, with the business aspect of it. When you're part of a team, you are account. You should be held accountable for your actions, but also you represent that team. Right. And you, um, yeah, you, you're responsible. You're responsible for yourself, but also the things you do don't just represent your name. They represent the University of Michigan. And for, I have a hard time believing he was the only one. But even if he was, you know, the fact that it is in a tournament setting, like you said. Now, if it's, you know, game 42 of the major league season and a pitcher is caught uh, with substances, you're not going to say that that team has to forfeit the game necessarily. You're just going to suspend that pitcher. But in a tournament setting where everything is on the line, you have to take some responsibility to not knowingly cheat. And he made a willful decision to cheat. And that decision should result in consequences for not only him, but also for his team. So I'll give you another illustration, Jared. So in the NBA, if a player gets charged with a flagrant two, now that's not cheating, but I mean, it's, 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 I'm not saying it doesn't deserve punishment. It does, right? A flagrant foul is excessive and it's against the rules, but it's, it's not cheating. There's a, there's a line there between cheating the game, the sport and, and breaking a rule within the game, the confines of the game, right? I believe there's a difference there, but when you have a guy who gets charged for a flagrant foul, what happens? You have the guy get thrown out. Plus what does the other team get? I believe they get free throws. They get free throws. So it, it's an ejection plus free throws. Same happens if you've got a, a player mouthing off at the official and he gets a double tech. He's out and the other team gets free throws. The fact that it, 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 this example, and I'm assuming another example, because I have no reason to think the, the officials didn't enforce the rules of the, that the NCAA has in place or the Big Ten has in place, but I think it's just a completely erroneous, the fact that you do not punish the team. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. It's not consistent with any other level of sports, uh, of any other sport, like the one I just gave an example of. The same applies to football. If a player is guilty of unnecessary roughness or targeting, well, targeting is a good example, mm -hmm. right? 15 He's guilty yards. of targeting, you get a 15-yard penalty, plus he gets tossed. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. And in some cases, they overturn the targeting penalty, but they still tack on the 15 yards. <laughs> The player may be able to stay in, but the team still pays, which I'm not saying that's right, but that's just how it's been. So I don't believe this is appropriate. Um, but again, you can call it sour grapes if you want, but I think it's I think it's really sad that the representative of the Big Ten Conference um, is Michigan, uh, who, who, you know, to some degree cheated their way there. I think mm -hmm. that's really sad.